In this video, we're going to take our input form and we're going to expand it a little bit. Um, we're going to add an additional uh, two fields actually to our form. Um, one field will be a phone number field where we can just type in a phone number. Um, and the other field will be a drop down list for us to choose what type of phone number it is, whether it's a home number, a work number, or a mobile. Uh, so to do this, we're going to extend our view model to add two properties. One will be phone type and the other one will be phone number. And then we will also go ahead and utilize our HTML helpers to help us build this um, this view. All right, so to start off, we will flip over to Visual Studio and we'll start by extending our model. So we will add a new string property of phone type. And we'll add another string property of phone number. Then we'll flip over to our view and we will add those fields in here. So we'll do label, phone type, and I'm just going to put a comment in here right now. And this will be a drop down list. And then label, and this will be phone number. And using the HTML text box for, we'll add x.x .x, uh, phone number. And that'll give us our text box for our phone number. So the drop down list will be for phone type. So that'll be at HTML dot drop down list for xx, and this will be phone type. Now, if we look at the rest of our um, overloads for drop-down list, um, the reason I want to look at these is that how will the system know what to populate the drop-down list with? The answer to that is to look at these additional overloads. So, the first thing is, is that we have the expression, which is our first parameter. And that parameter is our Lambda expression that points to the property or field that we're wanting to map to uh, for our control. Then the next argument for this function call is the I enumerable of select list item. If we hit the down arrow, we'll see that there's also object HTML attributes. And if we continue down, we'll see there's string option label. And then we also have the HTML attributes as a dictionary of string and object. Option label with HTML attributes, and then these are just additional overloads to accommodate for different scenarios. So what we need is we need this I enumerable of select list items. We need to pass that in to actually say this is the list of items that we want to appear in the dropdown. And then whichever item is selected will then get passed back during the postback as phone type. So for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to null. I want to see what the rendered output is with our phone list. So we'll save. We'll go ahead and rebuild and F5 to run. And we'll see here upon run that we actually get a runtime error saying invalid operation exception. And an exception type of invalid operation exception has occurred. And the details say that additional information that there is no view data item of type I enumerable select list item that has a key of phone type. Now isn't that interesting that it's looking in the view data to find an I enumerable select list item with the key of phone type which is the name of the property that we're mapping to with our HTML helper. Well this is actually giving you a lot of information and helping you to understand the best way to execute introducing this I enumerable select list item. ASP.NET MVC and this particular HTML helper drop down list 4 utilize a combination of model properties and view bag or view data in order to provide you with the easiest transition of passing in those drop down list options. So we can actually from our controller 
say view data or we can even use the view bag and as long as we have either the property of our view bag or the key of our view data dictionary set as phone type ASP.NET MVC will pick up that ionumerable of select list item and it will bind it to our drop down list for us so we'll go ahead and hit OK here and then we'll hit stop and let's go ahead and do that so our field is phone type so I'm just going to copy that into my clipboard and then we'll flip over to the home controller and we're actually dealing with the get not the post so from here we can say view bag dot phone type equals and then we have to provide it with an I enumerable of select list item now I enumerables are interfaces so it, you can't actually declare instances of I enumerable uh, but there is a select list class that's also available and that's kind of a helper class that we can use and it actually if we do a preview of that it implements or inherits multi select list and if we go into that further we'll see that this multi select list class inherits or actually in this case implements I enumerable select list item so by using the select list we're indirectly through inheritance and implementation getting the I enumerable of select list item so if you look at our select list it basically is taking an I enumerable of items any items so to do this and implement it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new dynamic collection by saying new square brackets, and this is going to create a dynamic array. And I'm just going to type into here home work mobile in quotes. And that will create for me an I enumerable collection that I can pass to select list. semicolon. So that gives me my three drop down options that I'm looking for. Now this is an overly simplified case. We could pull this data from a database, let's say, if we had a drop down list where we needed to pull data from or pull data from a database table and then load it into our phone type and allow these definitions to live in our database. But for this case, this will be perfect for our example. So we'll take our view bag and we'll set the phone type property of our dynamic equal to a select list which implements I enumerable select list item and we're going to store it with this collection of strings which will be homework and mobile so we'll go ahead and save changes now and we'll rebuild F6 and F5 to run and we'll see now a little formatting is needed but we have first name last name email phone or email password phone type with our drop down of our three options and phone number text box so if we jump back and let's add a little bit of formatting to our view real fast I will add a break here and a break here save that toggle back F5 just to refresh and there's a much better formatted um, input form so now we can go through here and we can actually before we fill it out let's go ahead and preview the source that was generated so we've seen this before label input tag first name type text and we have our first name our last name email password and now we have a label for phone type and then here's a select tag ID of phone type name of phone type and then here are these three options option one home option two work and option three mobile those are what generate our drop down list then below that we have another label for phone number, another input type of phone number, um, type of text, so it's our text box for our phone number, and then finally our submit button. So we have all of this data together, and utilizing that select list, we got our three options for our select tag. So let's go ahead and we'll fill this out. And I'm going to go ahead and select as my mobile. I'll do 513, 555, 1234 and we'll hit submit actually before we do submit let me flip back over here and I want to put a breakpoint in my controller because I would like to see that data come across so we'll hit submit 
And if we peek into our model in debug mode, we'll drop down here and we'll be able to see our email, first name, last name, phone, phone type, and phone number. So we've then now utilized our view bank, the drop down list select for, sorry, the drop down list for HTML action helper. And we are now able to actually create drop down lists by utilizing that view bank data and getting it to go into our view and then post back that data back into our controller.